This is the fourth video on matrices as part of the Edexcel Further Pure 1 course. Looking at the scheme of work, we have done everything on here. Um, in, uh, the yellow was what we did in the last uh, video, but it, I haven't quite finished off. I want to show you some of the applications of being able to find the inverse of a 2x2 two two matrix. Okay, So I want to show you some of the applications, well one of those applications. To start with, I want to remind you of what was in the previous video. If you'll remember, what we were doing, we were finding the inverse of a 2x2 two two matrix. And we said, in general, if you had a matrix A, B, C, D, its inverse was given by 1 over A, D minus B, C, and then the, the matrix where you swap the diagonals, so D and A got swapped, and you made the other diagonals negative. We called the AD minus BC the determinant, and the inverse existed when the determinant was not zero. When the determinant was zero, there was no inverse. It was called singular. When the determinant was a number, wasn't zero, um, then it, the matrix was called non-singular and had an inverse. And the way inverses work, if you take a matrix and multiply it by its inverse, you get the identity. And if you take the inverse matrix and you multiply it by uh, the matrix, you get the identity. That was basically the last lesson. And we're going to use that to solve uh, linear equations. Right. Firstly, the first idea, we need to be able to write simultaneous linear equations in matrix form. Imagine I said to you we're considering the following set of equations. If I said to you we're considering 3x, let's say... Um, plus uh, 2y is equal to, let's say, uh, that is equal to 5. And we're also solving the equation uh, 2x plus um, 2y is equal to 4. Or let's say uh, 7 or something like that. Actually, let, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it as 4. Okay, we are trying to solve those uh, two simultaneous equations, 1 and 2. Now, we have algebraic methods in the past of being able to do this and finding the answer. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start off by going to autograph and plotting that line and that line, seeing where they intersect, and that's the solution. So, 3x plus 2y is equal to 5. Let's go to autograph. And we're going to plot the graph, uh, 3x plus 2y is equal to 5. It's a straight line. And we're also going to plot the graph, 2x plus y is equal to 4. So we're going to plot the graph, 2x plus 2y is equal to 4. So going back here, we're going to plot uh, 2x plus 2y is equal to 4. And plot it. And we've got a solution, and the solution is where the two graphs intersect and autograph tells me that's at 1, 1. That's at x is 1, y is 1. So going back here, I know the answers to these are at x is 1 and y is 1. And let's check it works. 3 plus 2 is 5. Yeah, it would work. And 2 plus 2 is 4. Yes, it would work. Okay, and we just solved them using algebra. Now, I'm going to do something different. Do notice the following. The, if I write them where it, x is in a column, y is in a column, and uh, equal, equals the answer in a column, if I did this, if I wrote that as 3, 2, 2, 2, multiplied by x, y, is equal to 5, 4. Just say I tr translated it in that way. Okay, that is representing those simultaneous equations because if I multiply this matrix out, I would get 3x plus 2y, so 3x plus 2y is equal to 5, and I would get 2x plus 2y is equal to 4. So 3x plus 2y is equal to 5. 
and 2x plus 2y is equal to 4. So I can write a pair of simultaneous equations as a matrix uh, equation. So these two were times together. And that's the same thing. Now, here's the big idea of this particular lesson here. This here is a matrix times xy. So I'm just going to write this as a matrix times xy is equal to 5, 4. Now, as long as that matrix has an inverse, and in which case this one does because AD minus BC is not zero, I could multiply by both sides in front by the inverse matrix of this equation. If I do the same thing to both sides, it's absolutely fine. So I get AXY multiplied by 5, 4. And I know that a inverse times A is the identity, and the identity times XY is just going to be XY. So I know straight away that the answer to my simultaneous equation for XY is the answer I get if I multiply the inverse of this matrix by 5, 4, the thing that was on the right-hand side. If I multiply that by the 5, 4, I'm going to get myself my answer straight away. So let's check that's actually true. Well, xy then would be, using what I've just said here, xy would then be equal to the inverse of this matrix. Well, that's 1 over its determinant, which is 3 times 2 minus 4 times 4, which is 2. So it would be 1 over 2 multiplied. And then the what is the, in, the matrix? It would be these two swaps. So it would be 2, 3. Uh, and both these made negative. And if I multiply that by 5, 4, this is the inverse of that matrix there, and I'm multiplying it by the right-hand side. Well, let's just do this then. Uh, keep the half out of uh, action for now, and just multiply these matrices together. 2 times 5, subtract uh, 2 times uh, 4, which would give me the answer 2. And negative 2 times 5 is negative 10, and 3 times 4 is 2. So I've got a half multiplied by 2, 2, which is the answer 1, 1. So xy is 1, 1. And that's what we had up here. And so solving these is equivalent to solving a matrix um, uh, equation, which we can do by applying inverses to both sides. Now, at the moment, this might seem quite difficult to you, but after a while, it's, it's quite straightforward. But you can imagine a computer finding this much easier to do than um, doing the algebra involved in the way we previously do. So, let's have a go at an example. Use the inverse matrix to solve the simultaneous equations. First thing first, let's write them as a matrix equation. So, this would be 2 negative 3, negative 5, 6, multiplied by the column vector xy, must give me 5, negative 8. And I'm going to define A to be this matrix 2, negative 3, negative 5, 6. So A is going to be defined to be 2, negative 3, negative 5, 6. Okay, now let's check A has an inverse. First things first is work out the determinant of A. The determinant of A is 2 times 6, subtract negative 5 times negative 3, so that would be 12, subtract 15, because that times that would be positive. So 12 subtract 15 is negative 3. Okay, so it's inverse then is going to be negative a third, or 1 over negative 3, which is negative a third. Swap these, so it'd be 6 and 2, and make these negative, or change their signs, so 3 and 5. So, therefore the answer for xy, xy, 
would be the answer if I get if I multiply both sides in front by the inverse. Um, so the the inverse times this would give me the identity, so I just have x y, and the inverse to, on the right hand side would be six three five two five negative eight. So if I multiply these out, well let's just multiply out these here to start with and then multiply by negative a third at the end. 6 times 5 is 30, 3 times a negative 8 is negative 24, so 30 and negative 24 is 6, so I get 6, and 5 times 5 is 25, and 2 times uh, negative 8 is negative 16, so 25 subtract 16 is 9, and multiplying by the negative third in at the end, I would get negative 2, negative 3. So my x is negative 2 and my y is negative 3. We had better check on autograph this is actually true. So I, I was solving these here. 2x minus 3y is 5. So let's have a go at doing those. Let's just rub out this for now. So I'm solving 2x minus 3y is equal to 5, and I'm plotting that. And I'm uh, negative 5x plus 6y is negative 8. So negative 5x plus 8 plus, sorry, 6y is negative 8 plus 6y is negative 8. And there are my answers. So if I ask autograph, to tell me where the lines are equal to each other. It finds an answer there, and the autograph is telling me that's at negative 2, negative 3, and I found negative 2, negative 3 was the answer. So I'm done. Right, I'd encourage you to have an uh, go at a, a similar example just the way I've laid out here. So off you go, have a go at this. Right, let's uh, work through it. So converting this to matrix form, this would be 4, negative 1, 3, 2, times x, y is equal to 11, 0. I'm going to call that matrix A, and I'm going to just work out its determinant. So the determinant of A is 4 times 2, subtract 3 times negative 1, so that'd be 8 plus 3, which is 11. And um, therefore the inverse is going to be 1 over 11. Swap these round. So it'd be 2 here and 4 here. And change the sign of these. So that'd be negative 3 and 1. So that's the inverse. So therefore x, y is going to be equal to 1 over 11 and then that matrix times that matrix so 1 over 11 2 1 negative 3 4 11 and 0 and xy is therefore equal to well let's actually multiply this out 22 and nothing is 22 so I've still got my 1 over 11 so I've got 22 and negative 33 plus nothing is negative 33. Time, multiply in the 1 over 11, and I get 2 and negative 3. So my answer for x, y was x is 2 and y is negative 3. So I'd better check an autograph if this is actually true. So 4x minus y is 11. Let's go, go over to here. So I'm drawing the graph 4x minus, uh, minus y is 11. And the other one I'm drawing is 3x plus 2y is 0. So I'm drawing 3x plus 2, 2y is 0. Plot those together, ask autograph where they intersect. So highlight the two graphs, ask, them where they, ask it where they intersect and it intersects at 2, negative 3, and the answer I got was 2, negative 3, so I'm done. And that's that. 
Last thing, I'm just going to talk about a quick thing, just out of pure interest. Um, imagine we were uh, asked to solve the following using inverse matrices. So, converting this to matrices would be 2, 3, 4, 6, multiplied by x, y would be 10, 3. Okay? Now, um, I would call that my matrix A, and I would first of all work out the inverse of A. So I'd work out det A first of all, but det A is 2 times 6, which is 12, subtract 3 times 4, which is 12. Det A is 0. So A to the minus 1 does not exist. So I can't use this method to solve these simultaneous equations. Now, is that because my method is flawed? This is a method that only sometimes works. Or is it something about these equations that means there is no solution? Well, what, should we plot on autograph these equations and see why they may, may not have a solution? 2x plus 3y is 10, so we'll draw that. I'll delete these for now. So we're drawing 2x plus 3y is 10. We've plotted that. And we're also drawing 4x plus 6y is 3. So we're drawing 4x plus 6y is 3. And we draw that. Now, why don't these graphs have a solution? Well, they're parallel uh, to each other. They're parallel. They have exactly the same gradient. So they will never intersect with each other. So there is no solution. So that's what the meaning in this case of why the inverse matrix doesn't exist. So going back here, how could we have spotted that from, from this? Well, this here is double this up here. So they're multiples of each other. They're in fact the same uh, um, gradient. The lines are exactly the same as each other. Um, but the same, they have the same gradient as each other, so they never touch. So the fact that uh, a to the minus 1 d does not exist in this case, well, that was the same thing as geometrically saying that the lines were parallel. And so there were no solutions. So they did not intersect. So lines did not intersect. So that's something quite interesting that I thought I'd show you at the end, to show you that actually um, something we knew about previously about when lines don't have a solution, well that links into the determinant being zero and, and the inverse, the matrix uh, being a singular matrix without an inverse. And that's all for this video. So just to finish with, I suggest you read chapter four, page 103 to 104 and do exercise 4J, the whole thing. Thank you for watching.